Good morning, fourth grade. Today I'm going to be teaching you social studies. We're going to be focusing on the Reconstruction era. This was a time period immediately after the end of the Civil War that led to a lot of changes in our nation at that time. At the end of our lesson, you will be able to tell me what the impact of the Reconstruction era was on our nation. You will be also be able to tell me the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment and what they did and why they were added to the Constitution. Why were they used and important right now during this era, the Reconstruction era? You will also be able to tell me what the Freedmen's Bureau is and what sharecropping and tenant farming were during the Reconstruction era. So basically at the end of the Civil War, when they stopped fighting, did the South and the North become friends? Did they work smoothly together? Did slavery end as Abraham Lincoln was hoping? Well, we're going to find out that today in our lesson. You're going to need parts or components of this lesson. You'll need to pull up Brain Pop and Flow Cabulary. Um, and so during the video, when I tell you to, you're going to pause the video and you're going to go over to a certain website and watch the video that your teacher has linked for you. So you'll also need flow vocabulary and brain pop, but you won't do it until I tell you to pause the video. So first thing we're going to talk about is vocabulary. The first word that I want to talk about, or the first thing I want to talk about as an important vocabulary for this unit is the 13th Amendment. This amendment was an amendment to the United States Constitution that would abolish slavery. So I'm going to use my highlighter or my, yeah, my highlighter, and I am going to highlight that important information. It was an amendment to the Constitution that ended slavery throughout the country. It was ratified in 1865. While many slaves were freed by the Emancipation Proclamation that Abraham Lincoln gave during the Civil War, it wasn't until the ratification of this 13th Amendment later in history that slavery itself would be abolished. So the 13th Amendment is a very important concept. Another important vocabulary or concept is the 14th Amendment. In this amendment, the U.S. Constitution gave citizenship to former slaves. So I'm going to use my highlighter and I'll highlight. This was an amendment that defined citizenship and extended U.S. citizenship to former slaves. It also prevented states from restricting these basic rights from citizens. So the next one is the 15th Amendment. The 15th, 15th Amendment to the Constitution prohibited the restriction of the right to vote. So everyone had the right to vote no matter what their race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So as you see, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendments were added to the Constitution during the Reconstruction Era in an attempt to give the rights back to the African Americans. The 13th abolished slavery, the 14th gave citizenship to the sl former slaves, and the 15th get, um, restricted, or excuse me, prohibited the restriction of the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition. Another vocabulary word that we're gonna use today in our lesson is abolish. Abolish means to bring to an end. Our abolitionists used this term a lot and they wanted to get rid of slavery and end it completely. Abraham Lincoln is going to become very important during this era. He was important during the Civil War and pre-Civil War era as well. He was not only our 16th president, but he also led the Union during the Civil War. And his major goal was to end slavery in the United States. Unfortunately, he would be assassinated and he would die before he ever got to see this actually come into fruition to actually occur. Um, he was watching a play in a theater and he was assassinated by an evil man and he died. His predecessor was his vice president at the time. And that was, excuse me, that was Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson became the 17th president after the um, assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He would be the one that actually uh, brought the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments to the Constitution. It would be during his era that this occurred. 
He was not a very strong president, though. He was kind of a pushover. Another vocabulary word is assassinate. Assassinate means to kill an important person, usually for political reasons. So when someone assassinates an important political person or an important person, they usually do this because they want whatever they're doing to stop. The Civil War was battles in the United States between the Union and the Confederate States. This was the 11 Southern states seceded from the Union. And then another vocabulary word you're gonna use is Confederacy. This was a component of the Civil War. It was the 11 Southern states that seceded from the United States at this, during this era. And then disenfranchise is our last vocabulary word that we're going to talk about today. Disenfranchise means to take away a legal right, especially the right to vote. So basically, during the Civil War, there was a lot of disenfranchisement occurring. A lot of people were not allowed to vote because of the color of their skin or their education or women, in fact, uh, landowners. And so that's why that vocabulary word is very important during this era. Now, this is the time of the video where you need to click pause and you will go over to Flocabulary and you will click this video here um, called Reconstruction. It is a great intro to our lesson. So go ahead and click pause and then you can watch the video and then you can return back to this Screencastify lesson. See you in a minute. Okay, so you should be back now, and that video is a really good video. I could not figure out how to embed it into this lesson where you could actually watch it on the screen, so I thought it would be a lot easier for you guys just to pause me and go watch the video and come back. What would you think about the video? Pretty cool, huh? I love to learn history through music. It's a really cool way to remember. Did you hear some words like 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment? Did you hear about disenfranchisement? But did you hear about Freedmen's Bureau and the sharecropping and tenant farming? Not as much. So we're going to see that in a moment when I have you pause again to do brain pop. But first, I want to flip over to a PowerPoint and share a PowerPoint with you guys. The first PowerPoint that I want to share with you, let me make it large, is this one, and it's Georgia History Reconstruction. I'm not going to go over every slide in this PowerPoint. We're going to hit the most important slides. Reconstruction. The word reconstruction means to build something again. That's what the actual word means. It is the name given to the time period after the Civil War from 1865 to 1877. Georgia and the other southern states needed to be rebuilt and brought back into the Union. So that's what Reconstruction was. Then we're going to slide over to the next one that I want to go over, and that's slide 16. Reconstruction, the President Lincoln's plan for rebuilding the South, had three parts to it, three components. The first part was one-tenth of the people in the state had to take an oath to obey the U.S. Constitution. The second part was the state had to set up a new government. And the final part was they had to abolish slavery you think they were successful at that during the Reconstruction era? So let's go to slide 18. We're going to briefly go over the amendments one more time. I feel like we've covered that at the beginning of this lesson. The 13th Amendment was the amendment to abolish slavery. After Lincoln's assassination, Andrew Johnson became in power. He became the president, the 17th president, in fact. And during his era of presidency, the 13th Amendment came into ratification to the Constitution and it freed all slaves in the United States. And it banned, or yeah, it banned slavery in the U.S. and any other territories. The 14th Amendment made all former slaves citizens of the United States. The 15th Amendment declared that no citizen of the United States could be denied the right to vote on account of their race, color, or previous servitude. So just like we shared before, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were added to the Constitution to show the importance of abolishing slavery and to give the rights back to the people that they belong to. 
Now let's slide all the way to slide 27 and let's talk about Friedman's Bureau. This is one of those components that we have not talked about just yet in our lesson. Friedman's Bureau, Georgia had a higher population of free black slaves who were uneducated and unemployed than any other state. Educating slaves was forbidden in Georgia prior, that means before the Civil War. The Freedmen's Bureau created the first public school program for blacks and whites in the state and set the stage for Georgia's modern public school system that we have today. It established Clark Atlanta University and Morehouse College. I want to show you an image. This is an actual image of a Freedmen's school. There's the teacher and there are the students. So we're gonna go right into another vocabulary word that I introduced to you at the beginning of this lesson and that's sharecropping. These were some strategies that the farmers used in the South at the time during reconstruction era that um, they were trying to give or show that they were giving more freedom and rights to the African-Americans. But after we talk about it, you'll see that they really did not work out. Sharecropping. Many former slaves were forced to return to plantations because they could not find work. Freed slaves knew how to grow crops and landowners still needed labor. In the sharecropping arrangement, the owners lend the worker a place to live and his seeds and equipment. This is a picture of sharecroppers picking cotton. Now I'm gonna to jump to slide 34. Sharecroppers received almost no pay, just a small share of crops. Because the worker had no money for rent, he would give the owner a share of the crop, plus extra for the cost of rent and supplies. The workers had little hope of ever owning land because they rarely made a profit. When they made it, they turned around and had to give it back to the landowner, the white landowner. Now the this is a little different from sharecropping, but this facet did not really work either during this era. Tenant farmers. Now remember, African-Americans were free at this time, but a lot of them had to return to the plantations because they had a hard time finding work. And so they would return back to the plantations and some plantation owners would use the sharecropping method and some would use the tenant farmers. Tenant farmers made similar arrangements with landowners where they rented sections of land. However, unlike sharecroppers, tenant farmers often owned animals, equipment, and supplies, so they received more of the harvest. Even so, after the money was deducted for rent, there was little left over for the farmer himself, the African-American. It was impossible to get ahead as a sharecropper. This is an example of a cabin where some of the sharecroppers and the tenant farmers lived. Now on slide 41, we're going to talk about the right to vote. For a brief period during Reconstruction, freedmen were given more political rights than they had ever had and would not have again for a hundred years. With this freedom, 32 black legislators were elected to the Georgia General Assembly in 1867. Among the delegates was Henry McNeil Turner, an educated minister who had served as the first black chaplain in the U.S. Army. So I'm going to show you an image of him. Let's see. That's Henry McNeil, a little bit about him. And here's an image of him. It's actually a drawing. And then there, the last thing that we're going to discuss just briefly, and then when you watch the Brain Pop video, it will go in a little bit more. There was a facet of the white community that uh, formed a group called the Ku Klux Klan at this time. And then this was a, a social club for former Confederate soldiers. However, they became more political and violent. They were, um, their violence was because they were frightened of the African-Americans and keep them, they were trying to frighten the African-Americans, excuse me, and keep them from exercising their civil rights. So as you see, there's a lot of information that I just shared with you very quickly. But some of the most important key components to pull out of this lesson before you pause it is what Reconstruction means. 
Reconstruction means to build something again. That's what the terminology means. And this was used during the end of the Civil War to show that our nation was trying to rebuild itself through changing of government and the um, getting rid of or abolishing slavery at this time. The president at the time, President Lincoln, um, had three facets of this program that he started. It started with saying that one tenth of the people in the state had to take an oath to obey the Constitution. The second part was that the state had to set up a new government. And then thirdly, everyone had to abolish slavery at this time. So we had three amendments that were added to the Constitution by um, Andrew Johnson, because Abraham Lincoln at this time had been assassinated. Um, and Andrew Johnson put into play the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. Then he put into place the 14th Amendment, which gave citizens or citizenship to former slaves. And then the 15th, it prohibited the restriction of the right to vote based on color, race, or previous servitude. So those amendments became very important to our Constitution. And then we had the Freedmen's Bureau that occurred during the Reconstruction era. And this was set up, it was an organization that fed, clothed, and gave medical care to former slaves and also offered education to them. And in fact, during this Freedmen's Bureau, they established Clark Atlanta University, Morehouse College, which both still stand in Atlanta today. And it um, led to the first public school program for blacks and whites in the States which is a lot like what we have today. Some of the farmers in the plantations used two different types of programs that were not effective for the African-Americans. I made a lot of money for the plantation owners, but sharecropping was one of them. Many former slaves were forced to return to the plantations because they couldn't find jobs. So some of the farmers used sharecropping, which was not effective, and they also used tenant farmers. So both of these were things that they used on the farms during the Reconstruction era. The right to vote became very important at this time. Um, but, and Henry McNeil Turner led uh, this. And here's a picture of him as well, again, excuse me. But then we had facets of the, of the Southern community that began a club called the Ku Klux Klan that were basically making it very difficult on the African-Americans at this time. Now, this is the time of the video where you will mash pause on this video and you will visit Brain Pop. So when you go to Brain Pop, you will click this video that you see on the screen now. Unfortunately, I can't play it for you because um, I can't figure out how to get the microphone to work for this component. But as you go, you will visit Brain Pop Reconstruction. You'll watch this video. And then after you watch the Reconstruction video on Brain Pop, um, I'm asking you to take the quiz or your teachers are asking you to take the quiz right here that you see on your screen to show what you've learned about the Reconstruction era. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my very first screencast video lesson plan. I've been doing other platforms, but not this one. So it was really a lot of fun to teach you guys about the Reconstruction. It is a sad, still a sad era of our history, but at least there's small bits and steps towards what it is that we were looking for in history. Let's learn from history so it does not repeat itself. Have a good day, fourth grade.